listening to Perth Live with Oliver Peterson. Call now and have your say on one double three eight eighty two. Important conversation to have at twenty five after four, and a conversation we'll continue to have to have if the situation does not improve online when it comes to the bullying, particularly of younger people and kids online. According to the Acting eSafety Commissioner Toby Dagg, the month of May was the biggest reporting month on record since eSafety cyberbullying scheme started back in July of 2015. That is very, very disappointing. Paul Litherland does a lot of fantastic work in this sector. He's the founder of Surf Online Safe. Paul, this would disappoint you, I imagine. Good afternoon. Hi, Ollie. Uh, great to talk to you again, mate. Um, yeah, it, it, it's stuff that I'm continuing to, to see, obviously, and it, the numbers don't actually surprise me. It's, it, it's sadly, um, we, we're continuing to see the harms uh, as a result of social media and all that sort of stuff, and our kids, sadly, are every year younger and younger are getting on, so we're going to continue to see these numbers grow, unfortunately. Why do you think they are growing, though, Paul? Um, number one for me, uh, Ollie, is uh, from my perspective, I'm, I'm making sure a lot of kids now become uh, aware of their reporting options. So, so those 13 to 17 year old kids I talk with every day at school, just to get them to know how to report and, and, and that they are a, a victim of crime, that, that they should no longer be silent. And, and a number of kids, I'll, I'll actually point them to the eSafety Commission every presentation and say, look, guys, there's people out there who are going to help you and, and, and listen to you. So I think that it is a, it is a catalyst uh, while we are seeing uh, a rise because kids are actually starting to speak up now, which is great. The Acting eSafety Commissioner said that many parents are telling them that they found it hard to limit screen time since the pandemic. While greater device mm. use might be the new norm, it comes the need to understand how children are living out this part of their lives. Obviously, what we experienced here, Paul, was a lot better in Western Australia through the pandemic. There might not have mm. been as much screen time, but is that just part and parcel of younger people, Paul, and their obsession their addiction to their screens. Yeah, and I think we saw, it, I think, a double advantage there to a degree, Ollie, where um, because kids with COVID were all locked down, I think we, we saw, well, I know we saw a response where kids actually got sick and tired of being on their devices, stuck at home. They actually got out and, and physically interacted a lot more, which was a positive. So we almost found a, a, a balance there, which is which is good. But we, we also need to really encourage through through parental assistance, through education and through through governance to a degree is to really get try and get the balance right in regards to how much screen time our, our, our kids are, are, are doing. But we also need to understand that this is their world. This is, I, I challenge anyone to go a day without looking at some screen somewhere. Mm. So it's about getting the balance right in, in regards to what's quality screen time, education, learning, um, fun screen time, which is stuff that we're just enjoying each other's company online or whatever, and yes. that other stuff which is just reckless, dangerous, just for the sake of doing it. So we can get that balance right, I think we'll be okay. Because it's quite foreign to a lot of us, Paul, isn't it, about what our children are actually doing with their screens that are online. We take next to no interest in the games or the shows that they watch. Now, you know, mm. if you look at it this way, we go and hit a tennis racket and a tennis ball at the court or we mm. maybe play golf or we go and, you know, play net, whatever it might be you might do with your kids playing sport. Maybe we as parents have got to take a little bit of interest as well with what they're doing with their screens and therefore we're educating ourselves and we're actually spending a bit of time together with our kids. Yeah, and, and I really emphasise that quite succinctly and, and so much of what I deal with, I mean, my time, that six years at Technology Crime, mate, where I, I dealt with some pretty horrific stuff and... Uh, out of so many of the investigations we were doing uh, where children were the victims of crime, I, I'd, I'd go as far as to say that 90% of those children had parents who didn't take an active involvement in their child's online world. They gave them unfettered access to the internet, devices in bathrooms, devices in bedrooms. So, so those parents and grandparents who are listening to us chat right now just get involved. It's something as simple as sitting down next to them while they're playing a game for five, ten minutes. Get to know how it works, because that can be a benefit. Because if if you if you understand, your child is more likely, and I I, I really emphasise this clearly, is your child is more likely to come and speak to you when something does go wrong, because they know you get it, 
and and that little difference can can make such a strong impact on on whether or not a child does sort of get caught out. Well, we'll continue to have these conversations, Paul. They're important to have. And if there is that silver lining, as you said at the start of our conversation, if more kids are reporting bullying to the e-safety commissioner, mm. they're aware of it and they're making sure that they're trying to also help stamp it out. And, and for me, it's about making sure we always communicate, we always talk to each other. And, and those kids who, who know these these things, these reporting options, talk to your mates as well and get them to, to talk up because we need to know what's going on. We need to push these networks to start taking more responsibility for the harms that are happening on their networks and, and hopefully that'll that'll address it. And, and for me, mate, just finishing up, Marsh, he's got to stay in the team um, for, <laughs> for me. Um, you can't get rid of him. All the best, mate. Thank Good you so you. much um, again. That's Paul Litherlin, the Surf Online Safe founder with younger kids reporting more bullying to the e-safety commissioner, 133 to have your say.